Hello everyone, I hope all are fine and doing well with the JSAP preparation. I am Rami Zusaini, the JSAP administrator in Afghanistan. Uh, based on my experience, uh, JSAP is a win-win competition to all JSAP teams. The teams, during the memorial submission and oral pleading rounds uh, at the national or international rounds of JSAP, uh, they will gain a spectacular experience from the whole process of the competition. And when you graduate from your law school, then you will realize that how JSAP impacts on your uh, on your career. So respect the JSAP competition, respect the JSAP rules, respect the, yourself, your team members, and opening team members, and even the judges. So it is a fun program. Uh, just keep preparation for the uh, memorial and for the other rounds of JSAP competition this year. In the past, uh, we invited the JSAP teams at an orientation before the oral rounds uh, to present these lectures. But due to COVID-19 crisis in Afghanistan, we are not able to have such orientation on this year. Therefore, I recorded the first presentation and the two other presentations I will uh, record it soon and then I will share with everyone. I hope that these lectures become more useful and benefited for everyone. And if you have any questions, you, you have my email address and uh, in contact. Um, you can just contact me and I'm happy to uh, respond and solve the, those questions. According to the first slide of uh, the current presentation, uh, uh, I describe the main responsibility of an oralist is to persuade the judges and to, to the straighten of your client's position. When you have a good introduction, when you follow the JSERP official rules, when you have a good summary of facts, when you have um, a good roadmap of issues, or even if you have a good responding of the judge's questions and uh, having a good confidence and good eye contact with the judges. So these will help you to, ask, to persuade the judges and to straighten off your client's position. This is very important. How can you do this? Just practice, practice, practice will develop your straighten point in the courtroom. According to the next slide is overall uh, pleading strategy. So each courtroom, uh, it has 90 minutes, uh, 45 minutes for applicant side and 45 minutes for respondent side. We also have uh, order pleadings uh, ordering as well. So it begins by first applicant and then the second applicant. Then we have first respondent and then second respondent. So on the next part is rebattle and then we will have survey battle when respondent side. Uh, these positions, uh, the good time is when you write in the memorial, select whether you would like to act as an applicant or respondent in the oral pleading rounds. Traditionally, there are four members, so as oralists, two as applicant and two as respondent, and, and, and one as off counsel. And I will talk later about the off counsel in the next slide. Sometimes in the past, we had some teams that they were just two members. They act as both applicant and respondent side. And my recommendation is to give this chance to all four members, to as applicant and to as respondent. Because once you uh, uh, graduate from your law school, you will, you will see that how JSAP improve your capacity. So this is a good opportunity to the team members to be uh, uh, to serve as an applicant respondent and, 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 and give their time in writing memorials. So that's, that's a good opportunity. Do not miss this opportunity. for It comes once at life. Uh, so go and, uh, and see how, how you get experience from uh, these opportunities. On this next slide is off council. So off council has an important role in, in two parts of the JSAP program, in the memorial submission parts and order planning parts. In the memorial submission parts, so the off council can help both applicant and respondent side in researching the case and also writing the memorial. And even off council uh, read the official rules and other JSAP rules that uh, whether uh, applicant memorial, respondent memorial conform with those rules or not. And also off council during the order pleading. So, so the off council usually sit behind beside the applicant and respondent side. So the off council can assist the orders in written and also with the key facts and arguments of the case during the uh, pleadings in the national or international rounds of JSA. 
On the next slide is opening memorials. Uh, as I mentioned, each, goal, each, each team will have four rounds, two as applicant and two as respondent. We will share the opposite uh, memorials teams with each of the team that they can learn new things from the memorials and they can prepare their arguments against them at the courtroom. Uh, as a note, uh, the team are not limited by their uh, arguments upon their uh, memorials. So the team can provide new arguments uh, in the courtroom. If the judge asks you a question, why you, why you are not pick up a particular uh, um, arguments from your memorial, you can say that this is the best memorial, th this is the best argument that I can provide you at, uh, right now. Or you can say that after further researching, you figure out, you figure it out that this is the best argument uh, for the uh, for the case. So that's fine. There's no any uh, issues against the uh, approach. Dividing the arguments, uh, the eight prayers for relief form the basis of public and respondents substantive claim. So typically we, are, we have four arguments for applicant side and four arguments for respondent side. So the first argument and the second argument for applicant first and third argument and fourth argument for the applicant second. And we have the same thing for the respondent side as well. The first argument and second argument for the respondent first and third argument and fourth argument for respondent second. By designing these arguments, can be uh, can be considered by the teams by the following items that I mentioned in the presentation. If the team see that there are two arguments have uh, closely linked, so it might be the first applicant, the second, or, or the first respondent pick up those arguments uh, in, in the courtroom, or if there is this difference in taking time, they might choose uh, uh, arguments that have. Uh, they, they did, did not take much time of their uh, pleadings in, in, in the court. Or if, if two arguments have good balance with each other, so maybe the first applicant, second applicant, or first respondent, second respondent, pick up those arguments. So it's up to the uh, teams. Uh, dividing is speaking time. Uh, each courtroom have 90 minutes, 45 minutes for applicant side and 45 minutes for respondent side. Uh, this 45 minutes covers uh, rebuttal when applicant or sub rebuttal when it came from the respondent side. So each each team will have 45 minutes to cover uh, or plead in front of judges. But however, we have some restriction on time allocation as well. So your team, whether you are applicant or respondent, you are not allowed to uh, uh, give more than 10 minutes for rebuttal or side rebuttal. Or no single always from applicant side or respondent side can, can speak more than 25 minutes, uh, including the uh, uh, rebuttal or side rebuttal in front of judges. So we have traditionally 20 minutes for applicant and 20 minutes for second applicant, or 20, 20 minutes for first respondent, 20 minutes for second respondent. And they usually allocate five minutes for rebuttal, side rebuttal. Sometimes uh, the teams allocate 22 minutes, the first applicant, 22 minutes for first applicant, 20 minutes for second applicant, and then they will reserve three minutes for rebuttal or uh, when it's applicant or side rebuttal when it's respondent side. But be careful once you submit your time to the bailiff, so then it cannot be unchangeable. Introduction is the first and the most important part that can uh, help the oralist to improve their confidence in the courtroom. So you can uh, use the same introduction in all your rounds or you can uh, use variation of precise uh, words in, in, in the courtroom. So that's fine, there is no any restriction. But it is good to int uh, memorize a standard introduction and recite it on each of the match. And also I left a, a, a link that can help you well on the introduction um, criteria from the uh, White and Case website. So that's fine, there's no uh, problem. There are lots of introduction and you can go and seek. Even my recommendation is to check out a, a YouTube channel as well. YouTube is a good resource for the JSAP program. Most of the JSAPers, they share their experience and how to have a good introduction in front of judges or in, in the courtroom.
you can figure it out and taking take a note how they introduce themselves with a good uh, confidence way so that's very good uh, but however I, there there is very important point uh, courtesy it is very important to wait for instruction uh, from the president before beginning your presentation it means that once the judge is sit the first applicant the second applicant the first responding the second responding when it's rebuttal or sub rebuttal they must wait until the president uh, give them instruction to preside in the courtroom so the first order list as i mentioned has more responsibility than the uh, second order list so uh, the first order list should always tell the judge at the time allocation therefore sometimes uh, the first order list uh, allocate 22 minutes and then the second order list 20 minutes because two minutes will go for the introduction or semi of the facts or roadmap issues something something like that on the next site addressing the bench and competitors so when you refer to three judges so you, your excellencies when you refer to three judges you, you, you say your excellencies when you're speaking to one judge your excellency when you refer to one another judge his excellency or her excellencies the head of the judge we call president if you when you're referring to this judge say madam president or mr president not mr evidence or mr agent mr president or madam president uh, we had a case in the past years um, uh, an agent uh, 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 mr kinley uh, uh, called the, uh, the president mr evidence like oh so th that was something happened um, because the jesuppers when the judges asked lots of questions and they become nervous so when you have more practice uh, you can waive this kind of mistake uh, just a order list uh, referred to as agent uh, when you uh, refer to your uh, teammates so you can say co-agent not call his or her name uh, when you refer to your opponents as agent for applicant or agent for respondent side a statement of facts after introduction a statement of facts is uh, is also important uh, it depends on the judges uh, request so uh, the first uh, uh, applicant uh, should offer to present a summary of the fact if the judges accept then go but the summary of facts must be concise summary of the facts and it no taking no more than one minute in the courtroom uh, most of the time the judges uh, decline this offer because due to uh, time limitation in the courtroom a roadmap of issues after the summary of the fact roadmap of issues is important part for an order list because the judge is looking for an easy way to understand the issues an order list should explain to judges precisely how the issues will address today in the courtroom so i all i i left a, a a link from the white and case uh, so you can go to that and find out how an oral list will have a good roadmap of issues for the judges uh, it is to inform the judges of the legal basis of the claim and to give them an outline or roadmap of your argument so roadmap of issues is beginning for your argument side so before you go through to your argument you need to provide the issues what are the questions in the courtroom and then you will provide your argument that your side is is right in the, in the courtroom and also you need to only brief summarize your co claims in introduction as well so this is the important point that first order is uh, has more responsibility than the second uh, agent IRAC example IRAC uh, is a form of IRAC is a method to form your uh, or organize your responding or organize your arguments so IRAC is a method that you can organize your arguments and the JSA competitors should remember and practice the IRAC method of to present their arguments in the courtroom so IRAC present first present the issues then you will go to identify the rules and describe why this rule apply to the facts of the case and then 
uh, summary and we state the conclusion. Uh, I left a link here so you can go through and find out uh, more information about the IRAC uh, uh, method. So IRAC is a uh, is a is a way that uh, can help the oralist uh, to read clearly, concise, and logical. It's very important parts. Uh, even you can find out from the YouTube channel as well. Uh, it shows some of the old Jesuits how can you, they use IRAC method for providing their arguments or even to respond to the judges' questions. So this is very important part in responding to the judges' questions. On the next slide. So in this uh, in this slide, did with the law arguments which do not rely upon one of the legal bases in Article uh, Thirty Eight of the ICG have no place before the court. This is the important part. Therefore, you need to state the legal basis for your claim. Otherwise, it does not have any place for the ICG court. For example, Your Excellency, Article 16 of the ICCPR states, in this case, respondent has breached this obligation because. In this example, you can see a statement of a legal rule and an application of the rule to the facts of the case. Therefore, uh, you must state a legal basis for your uh, for your application. That's the, that's very important part, and you can find out more information from the uh, Whiten case about the lead with the law. This is the important for the JSOPs. You cannot say anything from your own opinion. Uh, you you must uh, go with a with a law. Uh, that's that's the important job for the oralist. Argument not in your memory. As I mentioned in the past, so I think it's, uh, it's time again. Uh, the teams are not limited by the memory. If the judge asks a question that why uh, you did not pick up the uh, sp sp specific memory from your memory, you, from uh, specific argument from your memory, so you can say that uh, you, you find out better argument. Or even if ask you a question that uh, uh, to explain a contradiction with your memorial, be honest and say after further researching, we determined that uh, argument was legally imprecise. So that's there's no any problem with the uh, uh, with your memorials. If you provide new arguments which is not in uh, specified in your memorial, so that's fine. Uh, it does not mean that you breach the uh, Simple question and uh, answers videos. Uh, when the judge asks you a question for yes or no, uh, you need to answer first by yes or no, then you can go uh, with your statement. Sometimes judges ask a very difficult questions. So they are not your enemy. They would like to know how did of your knowledge and flexibility in engaging, engaging difficult questions. Uh, sometimes, uh, Judges, they do not ask any questions. Sometimes the judges ask uh, multiple times difficult questions. So if you 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 need to just be uh, confident and respond the questions in a good way. If you become serious, then if even if you know the judge the, the judges questions, so you may face with uh, uh, trouble or you may uh, lose some of the points. If you cannot understand the judge's questions, it is fine. You can ask to rephrase the questions to understand it better and then respond the questions in a good way. So bringing judge, judges back to the roadmap. So this is this is very important part. Some of the judges ask a question which is not related to first argument. It might be related to the second argument, but it is good to respond the judge's questions. If you say I will come back later, so it, it is not uh, morality good, so it is good to respond the judge's questions and then uh, drive them back to the uh, roadmap of your issues. So for example, if the judge asks a question and you can say yes, Your Excellency, Article 117 of the treaty sets a territorial limit of 200 miles on the applicant. This relates directly to my second argument that applicant has breached that 
uh, treaty by attempting to exercise jurisdiction outside the statute limited. So you you respond to questions and give them a point that you will why when you start or begin your second argument you will go in details and straight about it. So it can be happen when you have practice. Try to uh, ask your professors or your colleagues uh, to serve as a judge and then reside in front of them. Ask them to ask lots of questions from your first argument, second argument, and then you will learn how to uh, drive them back to the road roadmap of issues. Even you can find out some uh, video uh, from YouTube channel as well. So uh, write roadmap of issues in JSAP competition. So you will see that how the JSAPers they share their experience while the judges ask a question. How you can drive them back to the uh, roadmap of issues. This is a very uh, important part. Side specific law or complement sections. When the judges ask to cite a specific law, then go cite a specific law. When the judge asks you uh, to, about the facts of the case, directly cite the relevant paragraphs in the complement. Uh, for example, your, yes, Your Excellency, according to paragraph 27 of the complement, Mr. Smith returned to his home at 8 in the morning. Or if the judge asks about a point of law, uh, you can cite source of law. Know Your Excellency, according to Article 47 of the treaty, the obligation is on the accusing uh, state no prove each aspect of its claim. So, while the, when the judge asks a question regarding the law or compromise, just refer directly to them. Rebutton and survey pattern. So, order pleading has two parts. First applicant and second applicant, first responding, second responding. This is the first part while they're pleading in front of judges. The second part is rebutter and survey pattern. When there is rebutter, you will have survey pattern. So the applicant might either begin its rebutter or wave rebutter. It's up to the uh, team. But rebutter is an important part. Even if you uh, lose in, on the first part of the oral pleadings, uh, it means an applicant side, you, you, you still have chance in a rebutter to win the courtroom. Rebuttal must be very concise with arguments raised by the respondent side. And the survey battle is also limited with the points that raised in the rebuttal side. It is good to go with the points that uh, and uh, when you stand as a rebuttal in front of judges, go with the points that you have three points uh, and mention clearly that uh, whatever the respondent side said is, is completely wrong. So this is very important. There are three criteria. Your opening is clearly wrong. You can quickly explain why your opening is very really, is wrong. And the point is material to the outcome of the case. So when you mention or follow these rules, your rebuttal might be very acceptable for the judges. I uh, I also uh, shared the white and case website. You can go to and find out how to have a good rebuttal or survey pattern. Even uh, when you done with the rebuttal, you can say just by thanking the court. court that's fine. And uh, you, you can also check the YouTube channel as well. Uh, how to have a good rebuttal or survey pattern. Some of the JSAPers or judges, they, they share their experience when they did uh, uh, as an oralist in the past year. So you can use their experience for yourself. Uh, in, in, in this year, national rounds and international rounds of this. Uh, determining who should deliver the rebuttal survey pattern. So, first applicant, second applicant, uh, you can do it while you write in the memorial. You can select whether you act as an applicant or respondent side. But determining the who should deliver the rebuttal survey pattern. So, this is this is this decision you, you, you must take uh, in, the, in the courtroom. So there are two approaches. The first approach is one uh, one approach is for the oralists whose issues were raised on rebuttal to deliver to deliver the rebuttal side, or if another approach is for strongest oralists to deliver rebuttal regardless of what issues are to be rebutted. So these two items will help you that who will go for the rebuttal or survey battle in the courtroom. 
so thank you this was the first section of uh, oralist uh, f first section of the uh, oral advocacy of the uh, our today's orientation if you have any questions or uh, problems so you can have my email address and phone contact and just directly contact me and i am happy to uh, help you with those questions uh, the next two parts i will record it soon and then i will share with everyone i hope today's lecture uh, being useful for everyone and uh, i will try to include more things on the next sections that will help the oralists become more familiar with the oral advocacy stage of the JSEP computation. Have a good time and I wish best for everyone.